just watched Cleverly Belly Behind the Ropes 2. Another very well put together program by the people at Sky. Um, coincidentally, I watched the program tonight with a friend of mine who doesn't really follow boxing. Um, he'd know who Amir Khan was, he'd know who David Hay was, but he's not really a boxing out and out fan. Um, now I've got to be careful because I am a Cleverly fan. I think Tony Pellew is a limited boxer. Uh, I've received some criticism on my previous video uh, on episode one from a particularly eloquent, uh, a particularly eloquent young lady from Liverpool uh, who uh, didn't like that I was coming across overly biased to Cleverly. So let me give a quote that my uh, non-boxing friend asked me tonight. He turned to me and he said. Uh, is this serious? You know, one of these guys is living a life of solitude, hanging around with Joe Calzaghe. The other guy is sitting in a house with a yo load of young kids with a bag of Maltesers and a bag of popcorn. Now, I don't criticise Tony Belly for having a family and having a normal family life. He comes across like an everyday fella, like sort of guy with a family, just a very, very normal kind of guy. And that's a positive thing. That's to be commended. But when you're preparing for the fight of your life, the environment he was in seemed like carnage. It's probably like all of our houses, but it's kind of not what you expect for an elite level boxer. You look at Cleverly doing his laps, training and working the bag in solitude, having a ring in his house, having Calzaghe come round for a cup of tea. And then you look at Tony Bellew, whose house represents the average English household, but is absolute carnage. The guy can't get a moment's peace. The guy can't get a good night's sleep. There's junk food all over the place. I noticed Tony Belly was wearing a sweatsuit towards the end of the episode. For me, that's a bit worrying. Let's not forget this is a guy who's just recently moved from the 12 stone 7 to the 14 stone 5 division. The fact he's having to wear a sweatsuit is a slight concern for me. There'll be people out there who know more about boxing training than I do. But for my eyes, a sweatsuit relates to losing weight through water levels, through sweat levels. It's possibly not the best way to lose weight in an ideal frame of mind. And for someone who's just moved up from the 12 stone 7 division, I wouldn't ideally recommend that as part of the training regime. All in all, Tony Bellew's setup, whilst commendable and whilst representing average England, didn't strike me as professional as Nathan Cleverley. He didn't seem to be living the life of a warrior, of a fighter, in the same way as Nathan Cleverly. Um, which I find odd, considering how critical Tony Belly was of Cleverly's decision to quit from Adam Booth. He was saying Belly, uh, Cleverly should have taken himself away. He should have suffered. He should have learnt from Booth, who knows about boxing. He should have been away from home. But to my eyes, Cleverly's made boxing his home. He eats boxing. He lives boxing. There's a ring in his house. There's Calzaghe at the end of his street. Whereas Bellew's house, to me, his environment, doesn't provide the perfect preparation for a fight at world level. Now look, my experience on this is limited. 
I've had fights in the amateurs, but I'm certainly not a calibre of boxer like Cleverly and Bellew. I don't know the ins and outs of sweatsuit training like Dave Colwell will know. But just to my eye, and funnily enough to my friend's eye who knew nothing about boxing, we weren't looking at two guys on a on a level playing field here. And in terms of making the weight, I'd rather be Nathan Cleverly at this point. People talk about Tony Bellew as the bigger man. But Cleverly's walking around on the weight with a six pack, which I feel to be very, very relevant. I know it's not all about six packs, but if you can be that fit and that lean and that well conditioned, while at the weight, it's very, very relevant. Whereas for Bellew, I don't like the fact that he's having to cut weight through sweatsuit training. For me, it's a bit of a concern. Um, his partner made a comment like, Tony Bellew would have gone mental if this bag of Maltesers had been in the house when he was fighting at light heavyweight. But now it's okay because he's a cruiserweight. Well, for me, that's not a good sign. The fact that Tony Depp Bellew can indulge in his favourite bag of confectionery before a fight, um, you know, does not a world champion make, in my opinion. And I think any fighter who beats Nathan Cleverly is going to be at world championship level. But I admit, I am biased. I am a Cleverly fan. I do go to Cleverly fights. I have followed Cleverly since the beginning. I don't have any particular love loss for for Mr. Bellew. So, uh, as my Scouse friend pointed out in my last video, I probably am biased on this one. For what it's worth, my thoughts are developing on this fight. A lot of people make the comment, this fight will be Cleverly win on points or Bellew win on KO. I completely disagree. The more I think about it, the more I disagree. I think the most likely outcome is Cleverly on points. I don't see Cleverly as a elite level puncher in the same way Sogo Kovalev, Adonis Stevenson. I don't view him as that puncher. I think his skill set is far, far better than Bellew's. So I think Cleverly points is the most likely option. But in terms of the second most likely option, I think we're looking at Cleverly by KO. Bellew's defence is unspectacular. Bellew hasn't got the best chin. Dropped by Bob Adjasaf, dropped by Elvin McKenzie, KO'd by Adonis Stevenson. In look at round seven of the Valerie Brudov fight. I mean, Bellew is on all sorts of trouble. He looks like a junk on a dance floor after the 10 pints of Guinness. Like, he is in all sorts of bother in that 7th round. I will re -watch that fight today. Now, to my eyes, Nathan Cleverly is going to hit harder at Cruiserweight than Valerie Brudov. Look at the way Cleverly was setting his feet in that public workout. I know the level of opposition Cleverly has faced has been solidly unspectacular. But he's gone about business well and got early stoppages in both of his fights at Cruiserweight. Cleverly isn't a massive puncher, but he's a solid puncher. And to me, there's questions about Bellew's punch resistance. So I think the most likely result is, Bellew on po uh, is Cleverly on points. The second most likely result is Cleverly by KO. Everything I watch increases my thought process more that Cleverly is going to win this fight. As for the programme itself, I appreciate I've slipped into talking more and more about the fight, the weights, rather than an actual review of the programme. But Behind the Ropes is a spectacularly put together piece by Sky Sports. I don't like to repeat myself as I did yesterday, but 
if you're going to watch one piece, if you're going to watch ringside, the gloves are off, the press conferences, I'd recommend watching this one over all of those. Because the banter between these two is somewhat stale. We've seen it all before with the first fight. The chat hasn't really developed. It's still chat about who's a bigger cruiserweight. Why didn't you give me a rematch? Speed kills. I'm a one punch knockout artist. But this gives a real different perspective. It gives you a perspective onto the life of a fighter. It gives you a perspective onto what goes on behind the scenes. It gives you some sort of insight as to the real individuals at question here. Tony Bellew comes across quite likeably, you know. In a sense, he's Mr. Average. He's got his family, he's got his kids, and you can only respect him and applaud him for how far he's come. The man's doing very, very well for himself. He's a nice man at heart, Tony Bellew. And he's being successful, he's looking out for his family, and he's headlining a Sky pay per view. The guy is doing exceptionally well for himself. And the absolute credit goes out to him. And that kind of hits home more after watching this programme. You get the impression that he isn't just this brass, cocky, loudmouth. But he's actually a decent guy at heart. And I do respect that. I really do. But for me, this isn't about you know who's got a more likeable family. Who's got a more likeable story. This is about skill set. This is about conditioning. This is about attributes. This is about experience. And that's why I will not sway in my thought process that Nathan Cleverly wins this fight. I'll probably do a video post press conference. I'll expect it to kick off. Just on another note, very, very briefly. I've been able to get tickets uh, for the uh, Tyson Fury, Derek Chisora, Chris Eubank Jr., Billy Joe Saunders weigh-in. If anyone's uh, the regular commenters are going to be there, let me know. Thanks for watching.